Once again, we are live at Azusa. Come on, let's praise God and put those hands together for our bishop and Dr. Colton D. Pearson. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Brother Alvin, and hello, Azusa. You have come this far by faith. Go back with me to the Woodlawn Park Church of God in Christ in San Diego, California, where we used to march in every Sunday morning singing this song. We've come this far by faith. Let's sing it, and we've come this far by faith. Everybody, Carlton Pearson, welcome to Azusa, reminding the saints and maybe some of even the ain'ts of the hope. Hope is happy anticipation of good, which means happy anticipation of God. However you interpret God or however you experience God or whatever your understanding of God is, you anticipate good in that understanding. Welcome to tonight's program. We've come this far by faith. The real emphasis in that 
song to me tonight is not we've come or faith, but this far. It's like a comma, this far, where we are right now. Somebody asked me the other day, am I happy? And I said, I'm not sure what that even is anymore. I just know I'm happening. I'm occurring. I'm functioning. I exist. I'm here. In him we live and move and have our or possess our being. This far, that means you're counting your blessings. How far we've come. Long distance. Long distance to go, but this far is what I want you to to, to focus on tonight, all evening, this far. Look where you are. You've, you've lasted. You've sustained. Your, things are never as bad as they seem, and they could always be worse. And they're never as good as they seem and could always be better. So we must find that happy medium. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is mystery. All we have is now, this far. Keep that in mind throughout the next hour. As many of you may have heard, our beloved and sainted evangelist, apostle, missionary, Morris Sorello made his transition last weekend. I felt it coming. I have known Morris Sorello for well over 50 years. He lives in San Diego. That's where I was born. We knew his family, the ministry. My mother started supporting people like him and T.L. Osborne, and of course, Oral Roberts, when I was still in elementary school. And that I would ever travel with him, or I used to go to Mission to London every year. We'd meet him there and um, have great crusades. Some of my long relationships have lasted from those. Benny Hinn and I would show up every once in a while. My friend Mark Goodrich, who's, still, who's now living in the United States, longtime friends. Morris was powerful. He was a man of concentration, consecration, fasted and prayed. His son David is a dear friend of mine. His lovely daughter Susan, who has taken such good care of him, and his wife Teresa. They were 88 years old, been married over 60 years, and uh, now she's a widow. But Susan and she are together. He just built and opened this fantastic place called the Legacy School of Ministry. Legacy really means what you left behind. I, I, uh, Susan gave me a complete tour of the place. It's not just a school of ministry, it is a school about ministry and ministering, but it's a, it's a theme park where you can take your family and sit in theaters with the multi screens around you and actually feel like you're in Jerusalem or in the deserts of Egypt. And if you, you pass by water, water splashes on you. You can sense dust. It's, it's, a, it's an active place and very powerful. I've sat in there, I've been in there, watched the films, and it's a whole tour. There's a restaurant there, there are hotels, you can have conventions and conferences there. It's in a very elaborate state of the art place. It's just magnificent. And it cost several hundred million dollars to build it. And now he's gone. So we'll see what happens as we fill it. And have, maybe I'll host a conference there one day, right there in my hometown of San Diego, California. Thank you, Morcerello. Thank you, Mother Teresa. Thank you, Susan and David, for continuing the legacy, as I know you will. I recently went to see uh, Brother Sorello and, and uh, Mother Teresa just less than a year ago, hung with them, loved on them, and then went back again. So I've always kept in touch with them. Whenever Susan was in school here, he would come and visit. He and I would talk. He was powerful in the pulpit, powerful all over the world, throughout Africa, India, Asia. Everybody knew Morris Cirillo and still does. He'll be greatly missed and always remembered. His legacy remains in our hearts and our minds and our spirits. To live as Christ, to die is gain. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Blessed are the, those who die in the Lord henceforth now and forevermore. They rest from their labor, but their works follow them. His works are there. His legacy is here. The prophet went up. The mantle has come down. It's all good because it's all God. We love Morris Rowe. Our speaker tonight is a legend for a number of reasons, not the least of which is he's one of the few who began so long ago and have lasted nearly 40 years. One thing that has attracted me to Morris Cirillo, and I'm from San Diego where he lives, and as a little teenager I would go to his Deeper Life conferences. They had an indelible impact on my life. I read that book. It changed me. I knew from then on I wanted to be a proof producer. <laughs> I wanted signs following. I wanted power. A lot of what we're doing today in field was birthed or, and contained through the inspiration that we've received from such a man of God. I love Morris Cirillo. Went to school with his children right here to where you. He's an incredible leader. 
profound speaker and a prophetic speaker with a heavy anointing. You are going to be blessed. Are you ready to receive him? Stand to your feet. I just want to make a bottom line declaration and I dare the devil to come out here tonight and disprove me in any way, shape, or form. He's not in control of your backslidden son. And not only is he not in control over our life as Christians, he is not in control over the world. Now we're going to draw some battle lines here. And we're going to get the devil on his side of the line and he's going to know that we have the power to keep him where he belongs. Anybody ready here in Azusa to walk out those doors with power? Put your hands together. Drop your microphones. Put your hands together. Are you ready? Put both hands up together. In Jesus' name, receive your anointing. Cece Winans is uh, in her own category, of course. She is worshipful, she's darling, she's charming. She's a precious, precious spirit. The song she sings perfectly follows us referencing Morris Sorello's legacy. This is called Alone in the Present. She sang it at Azusa with thousands of people, but while she was singing, it was as if nobody was there but her and God, her and her Lord Jesus Christ. And then when the track runs out, she comes back two or three different times because the lingering presence was there. We all were alone in God's presence, even when she finished collectively alone, all together alone. 
the consciousness was powerful. She had to come back two or three different times and sing it again. The musicians, as normal, just picked it right up. It's a beautiful experience. And I, if you've ever felt alone, always add this in God's presence. Loneliness, aloneness in God's presence, because there's, no, there's not a spot where God is not. So you're always with God, even and especially when you feel alone. Hallelujah. 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 Joy fills my heart. Peace rules and reigns there. Love overflows and your will clearly shows. the 
Come on, you can do better than that. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Alone in the presence of you. Ain't nothing like it, no, no. When I'm alone in the presence of you, I get healing, I get saved. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. He is so faithful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, you, yeah, can't help it when I'm alone in the presence of you. I get encouraged when I'm alone in the presence of you, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna run a little bit longer when I'm alone in the presence of you. Thank you, Jesus. Don't you love him tonight? Come on, give him another praise offering. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They're the names you've grown to love. They're the ministries you can't imagine being without. They've preached to millions all over the world. And it all began right here. This is Azusa. The next great move of the Holy Spirit would be among black people. The Holy Ghost just said, get ready, 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 get ready. Praise it, praise it. We're too pretty to praise God. why I'm traveling around the world is because I came here in 1992 and I cannot forget the bridge that brought me over. There was a very restful presence in the room when CC finished that song. Since the track ran out and the musicians 
took up. That would have been Matthew Burrell, who we're going to show you in just a minute. I've known Matthew Burrell since I was a kid. We all grew up in Southern California with S.M. Crouch as our bishop, and Bishop J.A. Blake, who was my pastor, the one who ordained and licensed me 50 years ago. Uh, the Burrell was a very popular family, but he was electrifying on the keyboards. When he went to the instrument, whether it was the piano or the organ, the energy in the room changed. I never thought this man would be working with me. We've gone all the way to Africa and all around the world. He's in heaven now, but he was always and will always be one of my dearest, dearest friends. In 1993, we, he went with me to the Dominion camp meeting uh, at the um, World Harvest Church in uh, Columbus, Ohio. Rod Parsley is the founder and pastor. And boy, do we have a time. The place was jammed and packed and there was the, the anointing was thick enough to cut. And I pitched to Matthew and had him to play this song. He makes the, the when he says, uh, I see the, the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. He stops, he got that from Billy Preston and he makes the organ sound like thunder. And we, we did that all over the world and every place we did it, people would just go nuts. There was really presence, really anointing. It's entertaining, but it's also powerfully ministerial. How great thou art, Matthew Burrell, my favorite in all times as far as getting that organ and making it an instrument and moving masses into the presence of the Lord. You'll be really blessed. Matthew, what's the Lord saying to you, son? This is for Joanne. Oh, Lord, my God. You ain't heard it like this before. Come on. Oh, Lord, my God. When I in awesome wonder Consider all Yes, sir The world Thy hands Have made <laughs> I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder. Oh, Lord, come on with that. Yes, sir. Thy power. The universe. Display. All right. Then sings. My soul, yes, sir, my savior, God to thee. How great Hallelujah. How great. How great. How great. How great. Yes, sir. How great. Come on, Matthew. How great thou art. Let's sing. My soul. Come on. My Savior God. To thee. How great. Thou art. Yes, sir. How great. Lordy. Lord Jesus. Come on, Matthew. Oh, Lordy. Yay. Give him a great big God bless you, Miss Coleman Whitson. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Boy, isn't that great? I often, co I, I sometimes envious and covet that talent, but I, I realize if I had that talent, I probably wouldn't preach very much. I just sit and play that organ. <laughs> That's a powerful, powerful instrument, and he knows how to use it. Thank you, Matthew. He's tall, he's dark, and he's talented. <laughs> <laughs> I fooled you. <laughs> his wife's very musical. His children, he has a daughter, a 22 year old daughter that can play the organ almost that well. 
his sons, and they're all involved in the church, and we're proud of them. When I was a boy growing up at the Church of God in Christ, we used to sing a song. Uh, the saints would just, in testimony service, just say, Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard. It's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? And then we shout, and <laughs> praise God. Alvin wrote a song. He's from the same background, and it's called Wonderful, Wonderful. He sang it at Azusa. This was one of the years when he was, was the Minister of Music for Higher Dimensions, and uh, he produced this album and produced these songs and wrote them, and they're just so wonderful. We love that word. I used to hear it a lot, Jerry. Isn't that wonderful? Ain't God wonderful? So when somebody sings it, especially in this particular model and arrangement, it really touched me deeply. It'll touch you deeply. This is Alvin Fruger. He now pastors the Presence Theater in Owasso, Oklahoma, just up here uh, short north of Tulsa. And uh, he's still leading worship and singing and writing and preaching and pastoring, doing a great job too. This will bless you. Wonderful. Brother Alvin, I hear that song. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. How many know he is tonight?
Most of us have learned to wave twice. We wave to say hello as a greeting, and we wave to say goodbye. We're waving to say hello to a new day, a new way, a new paradigm, a new America, hopefully. But we're also waving goodbye to things that once were and no longer are. The scripture says, be careful entertaining strangers, for some have entertained strangers, angels, unaware. Sometimes a strange experience or a strange dream or a strange conversation is an angelic visitation. And you'd have to know how to welcome it. But it's hard to do that because strange means different, alien, foreign, unfamiliar. When you entertain strangers, that means you got to wave goodbye that which is sometimes familiar or a problem that you have mastered that no longer needs mastering because it doesn't exist anymore. You have to learn how to wave things goodbye. And it's hard to let it go when you think you've mastered it and not been mastered by it. It's time to let some things go and to wave some things goodbye. Do it. John Pickey wrote a song titled, Wave It Away. And it features actually um, Isaac Curry, who in his own right is an amazing singer and now recording artist, and many people love his music and ministry. But he started with John P, and John always recognizes talent and exposes it. And this young man really, really sings. He's really powerful. Of course, John is in his own way. They sing and duet. It's just a glorious song. They presented it as Azusa 1993, and it was powerful. It was loving, and you're going to enjoy it. Now, eager to, to present it to you. And while he's singing it, I've said it to many people, wave last week, goodbye. Wave last year, goodbye. Wave yesterday, goodbye. Wave all your pain, goodbye. And accept the new. This is a great day to be alive, alert, and aware. I'm not worried about tomorrow or the trials it may bring. For by faith I am I can conquer anything. I cast my cares at your feet, and Lord, you comfort me, and by faith I pray that you wait the troubles away. Listen, Isaac. Don't you be discouraged when faith threatens your life but hold your head up high oh in Christ you can survive and it's in my lowest meaning Jesus Christ he's in the I say you can Take your troubles Baby, my way. Come on, everybody, let's tell our troubles bye. Here we go. Come on, say it loud. Come on. Bye, bye, troubles. You thought that you could win. No, no, no. Come on, Lord. Listen. Whatever your problem be, wave it away. La 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 di da. Whatever your trouble be, wave it away. Everybody say it soft. Listen. Shh. Give it to Jesus. Oh, he can Oh, he can burn him. Open your mouth and share with me, come on
just wait it Wonderland can sometimes be the wonderland. So while we're wandering through this experience in America, in our personal and collective lives, we must never lose the wonder. Keep wondering about things, wondering what's happening. And, and we say, he's a wonder in my soul. He's a wonder in my soul. He's a wonder in my soul. Bless his name. Let God be a wonder in your soul. Let the mystery embrace you. And you should embrace the mystery and enjoy it. Brenda Todd, again, is one of those very powerful women who is a prayer warrior. She learned some of her prayer instincts from my mother because when they first came here from New Orleans to work for me and with me, they lived in my mother's and dad's house. And she says that my mother taught her the intrinsic parts of prayer and fasting and seeking God. And Brenda carries an anointing. She leads the song in Azusa. Um, to Him Who Sits on the Throne. That's one of her signature songs. In fact, on her birthday, I don't know whether it was her 50th or 60th, but at one of her recent birthdays, I was there last year or so, and right in the middle of the restaurant, we had a reserve room. We all started singing this song as she led us to Him Who Sits on the Throne, a cappella. And you talking about the glory of God filling the restaurant. I mean, there was a bar and all that was still open and there were, there were patrons in the other part of the restaurant. Everything stopped. <laughs> <laughs> and the waiters and waitresses start coming in and they could feel this presence. You don't just hear it, you feel it. Every time Brenda ministers, you feel it. And boy, they, some of them were in tears. The owner himself and the bartender came in and they spoke to us afterward and they were so complimentary. She leads this song and thousands of course follow her in leading this and singing this song to him speaking of God in Christ who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb, speaking of Jesus, the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world, which means before there were as a, ever was a problem, there was a solution. Before there was ever a need, it was met. We got this. This is all good. Be thinking about that and see the enthroned presence of God and the Lamb that was slain for all of us. In fact, the presence was so great of uh, a God until I got up right behind Brenda and we went into all oh, the presence of the Lord is in this place. And I said it not because I was trying to convince anybody. Everybody knew that. But when you say it, it empowers it. When you say it, it implants it in your soul. And then you become connected with it, with your, your words and your consciousness and your spirit. And we just went on in worship. That's what's very unique about all of these Azusa conferences and uh, conveniences we, that we shared around the world is people loved the presence that they felt. It was physical, it was sensual as well as spiritual. So uh, enjoy all of it and just stay with the worship, stay with the flow and let the glory of God uh, relinquish you of patterns of pain and anguish and um, oppression. Be filled with the Holy Ghost new and afresh. This is it. Let's stand in his honor tonight, everybody that can get on your feet. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. To the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We bless him tonight. Everybody lift your hands just for a moment. Come on. Let's lift it up to him right now. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb and unto the Lamb to him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb we're talking about the King of Kings
Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. And I just love him with all my heart. Saying, I don't know about you, but I got a feeling. I got a feeling. I got a feeling that everything, everything, every big thing, every little thing, every known thing, and every unknown thing, it's gonna be our ride. Yes, it is. Come on, praise him, praise him, praise him. Give him glory. My, 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 my. I want to say thank you, as I do every week, uh, for those of you who give. I never know who's gonna do it. Some of you have been fairly consistent. I notice your names 
and especially when I see them on Cash App and I can put that little heart, I'm really expanding that heart to tell you thank you. I don't get to write everybody as often as I need to. Sometimes the address isn't there and the email address isn't there and I want to, to do that. So, uh, But I love you and I thank you and God bless you. We're able to do what we do and continue doing it uh, because of those of you, and that's a small portion comparatively. Uh, Bishop King just called me today and said that she was actually putting $100 in the mail, sending it to my mailbox, and just out of the clear blue. I didn't expect it. Some people I don't even know are watching this, and some people watch it and have, actually, what do you call those parties when everybody watch them? To watch parties. My baby sister is doing that. My friend Ellen Ewing out in San Diego, uh, she's like a sister I've grown up with her. They are having watch parties, and during those watch parties, people sometimes are inspired to give. Will you feel the inspiration to give tonight or whenever you see this? And in every, whatever way, there's no gift too small, there's no gift too large, but it does help us continue what we're doing, and we have a lot more for you. This is meeting a felt need in our cult culture, in our country, and in our community right now, and that's why we're doing it. God bless you, and as we sing the song, thank you, I'm thankful for you. God bless you. I'm a radical inclusionist, and I want to say something quickly about Black Lives Matter and All My Lives Matter. I think it's common knowledge for morally conscious people that all lives matter. That's never a question with the average human being, anywhere, any race. <clears throat> Black Lives Matter is a reference to a specific area of need, like on any given street, all homes matter. We know that. But if one is being vandalized or burglarized or is on fire, we focus our attention on that one because there's a special need. So when we say black lives matter, and of course all lives matter doesn't exist with black lives not mattering or anybody else who's marginalized for any reason. So keep that in mind. That's not a racist statement. It's not a statement of arrogance. It's a statement of awakening. It's a statement of saying that we don't want special rights, we just want equal rights. That would go for immigrants, that would go for the LGBTQ community, that would go for any group that is, that is marginalized for any reason in this country. Yes, of course, all lives matter, but the one who's hurting, those lives matter differently, regardless of the race or culture. So keep that in mind and keep a sweet spirit and be thankful. In fact, that's the next, that's the last song for today's program. It's called Thank You, Lord. The scripture says, in all things, not always for everything, but in all things, give thanks. For this is, I heard uh, Veron Ash says, this is what? All things is the will of God in Christ Jesus. All things ultimately work together in, or in, in concert for a larger and more expanded purpose. So be thankful. I recorded this song on an album called Reflections After the Rain. David Smith produced it. It was the first recording. It's the last recording I've done after Azusa and since. Uh, it's a solo album, but he surprised me because the person who made this song famous was Yvette Flunder, Bishop Yvette Flunder. Uh, it was written by Walter Hawkins, and we've showed him singing it live in one of the Azusa meetings. But I recorded it because I've always loved it, and David produced it and, dis and uh, uh, edited it the way he wanted it to sound. It was his excellent, but he, without me knowing, sent the track to, uh, to, 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 to San Francisco at that time, where Yvette lived, and she went into a studio and made it a duet. She sang it with me as if we were in the same room, and we weren't. We were almost 2,000 miles apart, away from each other. And it touched me so much that she, she's one of my favorite human beings on the entire planet. She is the one that invited me when I'd been rejected by the church, by most evangelical Christians, to her group of mostly same gender loving Christians who love the Lord, filled with the Holy Ghost, and had me to preach. Nobody else was inviting me. She invited me. I showed up, I preached, and when I finished, she got down on her knees with a vat of water and warm, warm water, asked me to take my boots off, and she washed my feet. And there were all these people, some of them were, were, were dissolved away with AIDS, HIV positive and dying. Some of them were healed of AIDS and had been restored through her powerful ministry. And they gathered around and it was a very healing moment for me when, and that made me all the more radically inclusive. And I became so thankful and so grateful for all of the ways God expresses itself in the universe and to whom all God expresses 
itself through him, herself, their self. It's powerful. So we sing together. Thank you, Lord. And I always say count your blessings. When you're feeling sorry for yourself, you're feeling depressed. Uh, again, things are never as bad as they seem. They can always be worse. So be thankful for what you have. A thinking person is a thankful person. Thinking means you are conscious of the benefits. And here they are. We transcend, we transect, and we transact in the Spirit of God. And through that Spirit, when we say thank you, thank God. Now, it's not us singing live uh, as, you, as you see us, but this is a sort of a, a pictorial of us singing with the things that people are blessed with and the things that make us feel somehow impoverished. See this mixture as Mike produces it so beautifully for you, and you'll be blessed. I'm just thinking about the people who are suffering all over the world. There's been a lot of flooding. We still remember the tsunamis and the war-torn nations and countries and families. Properties being lost and fires. Terrible family tragedies and so much internal pain that somehow I've escaped. And I don't take it for granted. God is so good. Think about it. Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases. People are slipping away. The economy is down. People can't get enough pay But as for as me, for me as for all, me, I can all, say, all I can say is, is thank, you, Lord, thank you, Lord For all you've done For me, for me. It could have been me. So sure could have been me. Outdoors with no no food. Oh, lost and alone. And no clothes. And no clothes. Just all alone. I could have been alone. Without a friend. Without a friend. Just another number. Oh, just another with number. A with a tragic end. But you didn't see fit To let none of these things be To let none of these things be But every day by, every day by, your, by your power You keep you on keeping me, on to me. I just want to say thank you I, I want to take time to thank you For all you've done For me Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all, all the wonderful done. things you've done. For hey, me. You've been good to me. Thank you. You've Lord. been so good. I'm really grateful in my heart, in my mind, in my I'm spirit. Oh, thank yeah. You, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Grace and mercy, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for your love that surrounds Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. All you've done. And all that you do. You've done for me. You keep on blessing me, Lord. I love you, Lord. Thank you. My soul loves you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The name Jesus, Yeshua in Hebrew, Joshua in English, English, or Jesus in Espanol, Jesus. It means salvation is of God or salvation comes from God. It's like Isaiah or Isaiah, Yeshua. So all of it represents to the salve, the ointment of the soul, that which ministers and tends to and treats disease or dis-ease, human ailments, 
of the mind, of the body, of the spirit. So when you speak, you're not just talking about a person, you're talking about a personification or persona that brings healing and hope and restoration to you. So remember that when you pray in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I get a quicken every time I say it because I remember my daddy praying that way and his daddy praying that way and my grandparents and great grands and Bishop Nathaniel Jones and Bishop S.M. Crouch and Bishop Mason. Those are the people who influenced my life. Oral Roberts, the Morcerello whom we celebrated earlier. I've done that and used that name when I've been in foreign countries and locally when, when somebody seems to be manifesting a deadly negative energy or that would somebody would consider demonic. I pray and I lay hands and I, oh, that, that, oh, that's that old classical Pentecostalism and it's still in me, it'll always be there. Yes, I'm new thought, yes, I'm expanded conscious. Uh, yes, I believe in um, uh, that I'm a, a spiritual progression and progressives and cultural creatives and all that kind of stuff, but there's no substitute for my experience of expressing Christ in the name and nature of Jesus of Nazareth. And so I pray in that name and in that nature, in that Anoma, which is the Greek word, which means authority, that designation, that you are healed in your consciousness, healed in your attitude, healed in your spirit, that God will supernaturally empty your heart of fear and that it will be filled up with the God kind of faith, not just faith in God, but the faith of God in you, manifesting as you, to you, through you to all the situations of your life, all the circumstances, in your home, in your heart, in your head, in your hands, there's power. You are magnificent. You're amazing. God is expressing itself to, through, and as you. I love you. I believe in you. The best is yet to come. And I minister hope to you in the name and nature of Jesus of Nazareth. Be healed. God bless you. God be you. And I'll see you again next time. They're the names you've grown to love. They're the ministries you can't imagine being without. They've preached to millions all over the world. And it all began right here. This is Azusa. great move of the Holy Spirit would be among black people. The Holy Ghost just said, get ready, 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 get ready. Get ready. traveling around the world is because I came here in 1992 and I cannot forget the bridge that brought me over. Give God a great shout of praise. I'm talking about Azusa. 